Major Maritime Trade Routes of the World A famous general of ancient Greece, Themistocles, said a long time ago that the power that controls the seas will control the world. Today, even after 2,500 years, the words of the Greek general are true. Today, America's military bases are spread across the globe to maintain its presence and control in the world's oceans. The importance of control over international waters can be gauged by the fact that the United States spends more on its Navy than on its Army and Air Force. The U.S. Navy's annual budget in 2020 was $205 billion, compared to that of its Army, which was $191 billion U.S. dollars. Despite the development of land and air routes, 85% of the world's trade is still carried out by sea. Why is sea trade preferred over land trade? What routes are used for sea trade around the world? And what are the choke points in the oceans around the world where the dangers of war often hover? The history of sea travel and trade dates back at least 5,000 years. Historians disagree on which civilization was the first to use the sea as a means of trade, but all historians agree that in the last 1,500 years there have been many civilizations and nations that gained wealth and power because of sea trade. Such nations spread their religion, culture, language, knowledge and technology around the world through sea trade and extended its influence throughout the world. A great example of this is the Indian Ocean trade route. This trade route was the world's largest maritime trade route from the 7th century to the 15th century. This trade route connected the African Swahili coast, the Arabian Peninsula, the Indian subcontinent, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Malaysia, and China. The trade through this route was so extensive that it was easily considered to be larger and richer in trade volume than the famous Silk Road. This sea route transported timber, silk, cotton, gold, rice, coffee, porcelain vessels, and spices. It was through this sea trade route that Islam spread to many countries around the Indian Ocean that is, Tanzania, Kenya, Mozambique, Somalia, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Malaysia and Indonesia, etc. In the 15th and 16th centuries, European explorers left Spain and Portugal to discover new sea trade routes. Christopher Columbus crossed the Atlantic Ocean and discovered the American continent. After this discovery, Spain and Portugal conquered the northern continent and colonized South America. Europeans brought with them diseases such as smallpox, measles, and cholera. These diseases were new to the indigenous populations of North and South America, and their bodies were not able to fight them off. There was no immunity to it, so a large part of the native population began to die from these diseases. Large numbers of the remaining native population were selectively massacred by Europeans. After clearing the southern and northern Americas of indigenous peoples, Europeans began to settle their own people. Today, only 7% of the population of the continent of South and Central America is indigenous. After this occupation of South and North America, Spain and Portugal made full use of the natural resources of North and South America due to the wealth obtained from here. Both countries became the superpowers of the world. Portuguese explorer Visco da Gama discovered the first sea route from Europe to India along the coast of Africa. The discovery of the new route created new attractive opportunities for Portugal to trade with India and Africa. As a result of this trade of spices from India and gold from Africa, Portugal became the greatest power in the world. Along with this, Portugal also captured the Indian Ocean trade. Considering the successes of Portugal and Spain, the rest of the European nations also started a race to colonize the world. These colonial powers included the British, Dutch, Italian, Belgian, French and German nations from the 19th to the 20th century. These nations from the continent of America to the continent of Africa, India, Malaysia, Indonesia and China took possession of the territories. The British East India Company came to India for trade through the route discovered by the Portuguese. The East India Company coming for the purpose of trade saw the opportunity and occupied the whole of India, using the resources of India and the rest of the colonies and from these countries by trading, Britain gained more power and wealth, and Britain became the world's superpower. British rule over the world lasted from the 18th to the 20th century. 
By the end of the 18th century, the entire world was connected to each other by sea routes. European colonial powers began to make efforts to make sea trade routes easier and shorter. The biggest effort in this regard in the middle of the 19th century was the construction of the Suez Canal. In 1854, French engineers began digging a canal in Egypt. The 193 kilometers long canal was intended to connect the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea by making a new sea route. Trade between Asia and Europe became relatively easy through building the Suez Canal on Egyptian land. At first, to reach London from the Indian Ocean had to take a sea route along the coast of Africa, which was about 20,000 kilometers long and took about 30 days. Compared to the Suez Canal route, used to be about 7,000 kilometers shorter and took 10 days less, plus fuel savings. Today, the Suez Canal is a very busy route, carrying 8% of world maritime trade. Today, Egypt also collects fees from ships passing through the canal, which earns Egypt a valuable foreign exchange of 5.5 billion US dollars annually. After the construction of the Suez Canal in 1869, the next revolution in global maritime trade came in 1914 with the construction of the Panama Canal. The 82-kilometer-long canal intended to connect the Pacific Ocean with the Atlantic Ocean and create a new sea route. For example, if a ship had to come from the east coast of the United States to the west coast of the United States, it would have to go around the Great South America and come to the other side. The kilometers became shorter and it took 20 days less and the fuel savings were even greater. Today the Panama Canal route is still a very busy route through which 5% of the world's maritime trade passes. Today, the Central American country of Panama collects tolls from ships passing through the canal which earns Panama a valuable foreign exchange of 1.7 billion US dollars a year. With the passage of time, while the sea lanes became smaller, there was also a lot of innovation in shipbuilding technology. At the beginning of the 20th century, a seagoing ship could carry 3,000 tons of cargo, and today this capacity is 100 times. Today a sea ship can carry up to 300,000 tons of cargo. Remember that one ton weighs 1,000 kilograms. As the capacity of ships to carry goods increases, the cost of transporting goods is greatly reduced. Sea trade requires less energy than land trade, so sea trade requires less fuel, which makes it cheaper than land trade, also freight management in sea trade is huge. It is easier to handle large quantities of goods, sea travel is relatively safe, so accidents are also less and it also causes relatively less damage to the environment. For these reasons, even today, trade by sea is preferred over by land trade or by air trade, even today 85% of the world's trade is done by sea, 9% by road, 5% by rail, and only 1% by air. Coming back to the sea routes, we look at the map of present-day sea trade. Here are the busiest sea routes in red color, developed countries trade a lot with each other, we can also see this on the map. As the Atlantic Sea Route of Europe and America is very busy, means that there is a lot of trade between these countries. Traditionally, the Atlantic Ocean Sea Route has been used a lot, but now the dynamics of sea routes have changed. The countries of Far East Asia have also developed a lot of industrialization. Here in the map, we can see why the countries of Far East Asia are considered to be the leaders of sea trade. These countries include China, Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia and Taiwan, etc. Being at the forefront of maritime trade means that these countries are also industrially advanced because these countries import crude oil and raw material through sea route from the Middle East, Australia and African countries as the industries of these countries run with this raw material and crude oil. These for East Asian countries send finished products made in their industries by sea. Manufactured products are exported to the world, especially in the last three decades, China's industrial development has reached its peak and it has emerged as the world's largest exporting country. We can assess China's industrial development by the fact that 9 out of the 20 largest commercial ports of the world are only in China. Now we mention choke points or narrow waterways or gorges on sea trade routes. Choke points are narrow passages in the sea where traffic pressure is very high. 
Choke points are very easy to close, which can stop entire sea route traffic. If this sea traffic stops, the economy of the developed countries can be greatly damaged by the stoppage of all trade. To avoid this situation, the powerful countries have different strategic points in their naval seas where they are present all the time. Due to these geopolitics of sea waters, there is often tension between these powerful countries. Important chalk points are Panama Canal, Suez Canal, and the Bosphorus Strait of Istanbul, Strait of Malacca, Strait of Hormuz, and Strait of Bab al Mandab. The Strait of Malacca is located between Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. At one point, this choke point is so narrow that it is only about 3 kilometers wide. About 25% of the world's trade passes through the Strait of Malacca. All the oil supply from the Middle East to China is through this route. So, Malacca Strait is the backbone for China. China is creating alternative supply routes to end its complete dependence on Malacca Strait. Sepak is also among these alternative routes. Another important crossing point is the Strait of Hormuz. The Strait of Hormuz is located in the northeast of the Arabian Peninsula between Iran and Oman. The Strait of Hormuz is only 55 kilometers long and connects the Persian Gulf with the Arabian Sea. The Strait of Hormuz through Hormuz, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, Arab Emirates, Iran, and Qatar export their oil to the world. About 21% of the world's oil is supplied through the Strait of Hormuz. Its importance is therefore very high for these countries, since Iran can very easily close the Strait of Hormuz, and American ships are always present around this area. There are frequent clashes between the navies of Iran and the United States in this area. Another important crossing point is the Bab Al Mandab Strait. The Bab Al Mandab Strait is located in the southwest of the Arabian Peninsula between Yemen and Djibouti. The Bab Al Mandab Strait is only 28 kilometers long and connects the Red Sea with the Arabian Sea. The importance of Al Mandab is high because all traffic from Asia to Europe first passes through the strait and then through the Suez Canal. Due to the special importance of the Bab Al Mandab Strait and the conditions of the region, there is a war between the Houthi rebels and the Saudi coalition forces. The threat of Somali pirates often hovers around the Bab Al Mandab Strait. Due to its importance and conditions in the region, in a small country like Djibouti, there are military bases of the five countries. The countries that have military bases include the United States, France, Italy, China, and Japan. The Panama Canal is an artificial waterway located in Panama, a country in Central America. It connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean, providing a crucial shortcut for maritime trade between the two major bodies of water. The canal has had a significant impact on global trade and shipping since its completion in 1914. The construction of the Panama Canal was a remarkable engineering feat. It involved the excavation of an 80-kilometer channel through the Isthmus of Panama, a narrow strip of land that separates North and South America. The canal features a series of locks that lift ships from sea level to the elevation of Gatun Lake, an artificial body of water created to facilitate the passage of vessels. From there, ships traverse the Culebra Cut, a section of the canal carved through solid rock, before descending through another set of locks to reach the Pacific Ocean. The Panama Canal has played a vital role in global trade, significantly reducing the time and distance required for ships to travel between the Atlantic and Pacific. It has become a crucial artery for international shipping, facilitating the transportation of goods, commodities, and natural resources. The canal has had a profound impact on the economies of numerous countries, enabling more efficient trade routes and opening up new markets. Control of the Panama Canal has undergone significant changes over the years. Originally controlled by the United States, the canal was handed over to Panama on December 31, 1999, as part of the Torrijos-Carter Treaties. Panama now operates and manages the canal, overseeing its maintenance and ensuring its smooth operation. In recent years, there have been discussions and initiatives to expand the capacity of the Panama Canal. The expansion project, completed in 2016, involved the construction of new locks to accommodate larger vessels, known as new Panamax ships. 
This expansion has increased the canal's capacity, allowing for the passage of larger and more efficient ships, further enhancing its role in global trade. The Panama Canal remains a vital and strategic transportation route, contributing to the growth and development of global commerce. It serves as a testament to human engineering capabilities and continues to shape international trade patterns. The Bosphorus Strait is a narrow waterway located in Istanbul, Turkey, connecting the Black Sea to the Sea of Marmara. It separates the European and Asian sides of Istanbul and is a vital maritime route for trade and transportation. The Bosphorus has been a significant waterway for centuries due to its strategic location. It has played a crucial role in the historical and cultural development of Istanbul and has been a meeting point for different civilizations and cultures. The strait is approximately 27 kilometers long and varies in width from about 1 kilometer to 3.7 kilometers. It is characterized by its strong currents and challenging navigation conditions, which require careful attention from ship captains. The Bosphorus is a bustling maritime passage, accommodating a significant amount of commercial and passenger traffic. Thousands of vessels, including cargo ships, oil tankers, and cruise ships, navigate through the strait each year. It serves as a crucial link between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean, allowing goods and resources to flow between Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Along the shores of the Bosphorus, there are numerous historical landmarks and architectural wonders. Iconic structures such as the Hagia Sophia, Topkapi Palace, and the Dolomas Palace grace the skyline, showcasing the rich history and cultural heritage of Istanbul. The Bosphorus is not only a vital transportation route, but also a picturesque and popular destination for tourists. Overall, the Bosphorus Strait is a significant waterway that has shaped the history, culture, and economy of Istanbul and Turkey. It serves as a vital link between the Black Sea and the Sea of Marmara, facilitating trade, transportation, and tourism in the region.